Welcome to section 14.1a. All right, general people, in chapter 14, we're going to be discussing new theories to describe bonding. So what I want you guys to understand is that what chemists and scientists do is they come up with theories. The theories are used to explain the natural world. Now, some theories are better for certain purposes, and other theories might be useful in other kind of circumstances. For example, we know quantum mechanics describes our observations when we are dealing with atoms and subatomic particles. However, we really don't use quantum mechanics when we are doing everyday things like building bridges, building cars, and such. So every theory has its place. So in the last chapter, we talked about Lewis dot structures. And the idea here is that this is called the LE model or the localized electron model. The idea here is that we are going to form bonds. The electrons are going to be in the static positions between the two nuclei in the bonds themselves. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put that on the back burner. We're going to talk about another kind of theory. And in this theory, what we're going to be talking about is hybridization and orbital overlap theory. So here's the idea. We're going to start out with atomic theory. So when we started with atomic theory, what we said is we had the nucleus in the center. And this contained my positive subatomic particles, my proton. And then we said that the electron has this probability to be around this nucleus. So if we were to do this for the hydrogen atom, the hydrogen atom has one electron in the 1s orbital. And so here, what I've shown you guys is the 1s orbital. It's spherically around. And so I have a probability to find the electron kind of where I have these green dots. And as I move further away, it becomes less and less probable to find that electron. So to kind of simplify my drawing, I have my nucleus and I have the probability to find that electron kind of in that green shaded area. So if this is hydrogen, what I can do is I can bring another hydrogen and I can do that with another hydrogen atom. I can put my hydrogen and then there is some probability to find the electron and that probability is perfectly symmetric around that nucleus. So I can bring these two atoms together. I can draw their orbitals and these orbitals are the probability to find that electron. Now what you guys will see is that these orbitals will overlap with each other. And so that means that overlap right there is the probability of finding two electrons between the two atoms, or in other words, a bond. And this is what hybridization theory does. It says take the atomic orbitals that you have, bring the two nucleuses together, and when you have an overlap between the orbitals or the probability of where to find those electrons, when you have that overlap, that is going to form a bond. This is going to be the molecular orbital or the probability to find where the electrons are when I am bonded. Now, this theory is well and dandy to make the H2 molecule, but I run into problems when I start talking about other molecules. For example, let's look at methane. So again, this is CH4. And so if I were to draw my Lewis dot structure, I would have carbon bonded to four hydrogens. Now I can use Vesper and what I would get is a tetrahedral. But let's think about what's happening here. If I have the carbon in the center, I have the valence orbitals. Now the valence orbitals are a 2s, a 2py, 2px, and 2pz. So here are the outermost orbitals, my valence orbitals. Now I want you guys to remember the directions in which these orbitals are pointed at. My S orbital, completely symmetric, but if I look at PY, PX, and PZ, 
all my p orbitals, well, they're 90 degrees away from each other. And so if I were to do something where I try to overlap things, well, I should get 90 degree angles out of this. But that's not what I get when I go ahead and look at the structure. What I get according to Vesper is I get a tetrahedron. So here's what hybridization theory does. It tries to reconcile two theories. What I'm going to try to do here is I'm going to try to make sense and bring together atomic theory, and I'm trying to bring in together Vesper. So let me go ahead and try to explain the problem again using models. All right, gentle people, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to have my carbon atom. So here's my carbon atom, and I've put on these little paddles right here. Now these paddles are going to represent orbitals. So in this case, what I have is a p orbital. Remember, a p orbital is dumbbell shaped. So in this case, I have probability of finding the electron above the atom and below the atom. Now let's call this pz. Now I can put another p orbital here. And so this one is going from left to right. So this left to right one, let's call this px. And let's put our third p orbital on there. And then this one is going in and out. Let's call that py. So what I'm showing you here is three p orbitals. And remember, a p orbital is a dumbbell. And so some of it is above, some of it is below, left, right, in and out. There's two lobes per p orbital. Now what you guys will see is that each p orbital here is 90 degrees away from each other. So what's gonna happen is I'm gonna have a hydrogen atom come close to this carbon atom. Now the hydrogen atom is going to have a 1s orbital, so I'm gonna con so I'm gonna consider it a perfect sphere. Now remember, for this theory to occur, I'm gonna have to overlap these orbitals. So I'm gonna bring them together, and when they overlap, that's when I'm gonna form a bond. But here's the problem. All these orbitals off of carbon, well, they're 90 degrees from each other. And so if I were to make this overlap happen, what I would get is a bond out of this. And if I keep doing this, where I overlap these incoming hydrogens, this is the problem that starts to arise. All my overlaps will be 90 degrees from each other. But this isn't the structure of methane. Methane looks something like this, where my angles are 109.5. And so this is what I want to reconcile. How do we get our orbitals pointed in the right direction? How do I make these things that are 90 degrees apart from each other be 109.5 degrees away from each other? And that way I can go ahead and get the appropriate structure that Vesper predicts. All right, gentle people, what I'm going to do is something called hybridization. Now, what hybridization does is it looks at the orbitals that I have, the S, PY, PX, and PZ. And what I have to understand about orbitals are they are waves. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix waves together to generate new waves. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the s orbital, which is a wave. I'm going to take py, px, and pz. Each one of these represents a wave. And I'm going to take these waves, mix them together, and I am going to generate four new waves. Now, these four new waves are going to be called sp3 waves, or sp3 orbitals. So to give you an analogy, say you have a glass of Sprite, a glass of Pepsi, a glass of Pepsi, and a glass of Pepsi. So you have four glasses worth of soda. You take all that soda, you pour it into one bucket, mix them together, and then you're going to pour out new glasses of soda that is all mixed together. Now, this soda is going to be one part Sprite and three parts Pepsi. 
or in other words, an sp3 drink. And so this is what we're going to do with orbitals. You put in four orbitals, you're always going to get out four new orbitals. They're going to be a mixture or a combination and share the character of whatever you mixed. And so in this case, I'm going to get what's called an sp3 orbital. Now the shape of an sp3 orbital is a dumbbell, but it's kind of a lopsided dumbbell. So what I have is I'm going to elongate one lobe and I'm going to shrink the other lobe. Now it turns out that these four sp3 orbitals are orientated in space a little differently after I go ahead and mix these orbitals together. So here's my atomic orbitals. I mix them together and these orbitals are my four sp3 orbitals. Now what you guys will see is that lopsided dumbbell and each one of these lopsided dumbbells are pointed in different directions. If I were to take all these lopsided dumbbells and put it into one picture, this is what you would get. And what you'll notice is that each one of these new orbitals are 109.5 degrees. So these new sp3 orbitals turn out to be the perfect orientation to get what Vesper predicts. All right, general people, let's go ahead and use my model to show you what's happening here. So again, here is my carbon atom with my atomic orbitals that are unhybridized. So here are my 3p orbitals. What I'm going to do is I'm going to mix all those orbitals together. I'm going to mix those waves and I'm going to generate my sp3 orbitals. So in this case, the white paddles right here represent one sp3 orbital. So what you guys will see is I have four sp3 orbitals. So this is going to be the new probability of finding where those electrons are going to be. So I'm going to take my hydrogen, which is an s orbital, and I'm going to go ahead and overlap it. So when I see two orbitals overlap, that means I get a bond. And what you guys will notice is that I get my tetrahedral structure out. So now these new hybrid orbitals are pointed in the correct direction. They are going to allow for orbital overlap. And this is how I can get from atomic theory to Vesper theory. I am merging these two theories together to explain the bonding in the molecules I observe. All right, general people, let's go ahead and summarize what we did here. So what I said here is my atomic orbitals are not in the proper orientation to explain Vesper. So I wanna to try to bring together atomic theory and Vesper theory. To do this, I'm going to invoke what's called hybridization. Hybridization says that I'm going to mix an S and P orbitals together to produce a new type of orbital, the hybrid orbitals. So in the case of steric number four, to explain the bonding in something like methane, what I need to do is I need to have sp3 orbitals. Because steric number four, I need angles of 109.5 degrees. To get this angle, what I need to do is I need to mix one s orbital, with three p orbitals together. For methane, the 2s and the 2p are the orbitals that are on the, on the outside. So when I mix this, I'm gonna mix an s, a p, a p, and a p to get what's called an sp3 orbital. These sp3 orbitals are 109.5. Now my electrons are in the proper place, for me to overlap with the hydrogen's orbital, which is just a 1s orbital. Once I get this overlap, I'm going to start forming bonds, and those bonds are going to be the location of where my atoms are, and it's going to show the geometry. And so what I get is my hydrogens laid out exactly as Vesper predicted. 
I hope that made sense, Kim 1A, and remember to stay safe.